Right, hi guys, uh, some of you may know me. Uh, my name is Oli, I am the co-director of VC Homes and VCC Investments. We're going to be doing a bit more marketing now over the coming weeks, hopefully delivering new content every single day. Um, but on a Tuesday, uh, we're gonna do sort of a basics or beginners type video series, so to speak. And uh, the first one I'm going to be doing is a 10 step beginner's guide to HMOs. Obviously we're sort of semi still in lockdown, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. We are, we have been working from home a lot more, um, which is where I am now. Uh, we've also got an office, which uh, some of the videos will either be at the office or here. You'll get myself and uh, my partner, a business partner, Alicia. Uh, she's not going to be in this video, but hopefully I'll drag her into some of these videos coming up because we'll definitely need her to talk about the refurbishment and stuff like that. But for today, you've got me. So who is this video for? It's basically for people that are either just starting out in doing their own HMOs and maybe you're looking into doing a HMO project. Uh, potentially, you might have already done one HMO project, but you're still a little bit nervous or unsure of a few things. Um, so it is really a, a beginner's guide. If you're if you've done two or three HMOs, I'm not sure you'll deduce anything from this. Maybe there'll be a few little golden nuggets, but it's more for beginners. Right. So the videos that we're going to go through. Uh, number one is what is a HMO. Number two, the the research and uh, the initial things to think about before buying a HMO property. Then we're gonna go on to how to analyze a HMO deal. So we're gonna go through our spreadsheet and just a few things. We're not gonna go into detail, detail, detail because the videos will take hours if not, but we're just gonna give you an overview of everything. Video number four is going to be the property itself and uh, the refurb process. Um, so we'll give you some good nuggets in that video. Uh, number five, we're gonna talk about fire safety standards because they're really important in HMOs. Number six, we're going to discuss notice boards and what you need to put on your notice boards. Uh, number seven is gonna be what do you include in the rent? Video number eight is going to be what is the responsibility of the landlord? Video number nine is going to be what is the responsibility of the tenant? Video number 10 is going to be about whether you self-manage your HMO or whether you use a letting agent to do that. Right, so, so what is a HMO? Uh, well, let's discuss what isn't a HMO. So typically a buy-to-let house uh, is where you rent out a whole house, let's call it a three-bedroom house. You might have a mum and dad and their two children forming one household. Um, that's a buy-to-let. They would pay the utilities, gas, electric, all that sort of stuff, and they would also do a fair bit of their own maintenance, but not to the external of the building. But what is a HMO? Landlords have to be careful now. So if you've got three friends that rent a house from you and you think it's a buy to let, well actually that is a HMO. So a HMO, the definition is if you've got three or more individual households within one house. But typically what I would define a HMO as, uh, which is a house in multiple occupation for those that you don't know, um, is uh, where you would typically you would get a three or four bed house and you would turn that into a five or six bedroom house uh, and potentially you could have ensuite bathrooms for all of the uh, bedrooms so let's say we did that you'd have individuals renting a room from you in the in their own rooms and they would have their own bathrooms but they would share communal areas such as the kitchen garden any hallways a lounge etc um, that's typically a HMO you could have three people that don't have en suites and they all share one bathroom um, but essentially that is what a HMO is as a basic definition. So things you need to be aware of is licensing. So um, since October 2019, uh, all HMOs now require you to obtain a license. Licenses last for five years and within that there are licensing criteria. Um, so the guidelines, you've got to follow quite a lot of criteria to get your HMI up and running, so to obtain that license. Uh, room sizes need to be of the correct size, you need to have enough amenity standards within the house, um, so enough bathroom facilities, enough kitchen facilities, worktop space, um, all of this sort of stuff. Uh, encompasses your HMI and also fire safety regulations. There's quite a lot of fire safety regulations that you need to put into your HMO depending on the number of stories you have, how, how big or small your HMO is. So you really need to understand and, and learn what the guidelines are for your specific area, national, national as well as your area. Um, and also some councils have their own stipulations as well. So it all depends on the size of the stock, but all of this we're gonna go through in a later video. So I'm just sort of skimming over in it, skimming over it for this introduction video. But yes, uh, typically most landlords, you're allowed to have six people in a house. 
uh, before you need to go to planning permission. If you want seven or more people, you, you're going to have to go to planning permission uh, to get change of use for your building. Uh, that is why you'll find most HMO landlords will do either a five or six bedroom house. Sometimes if we do a five bedroom house, we'll designate one room to be a couple's room where we can have two people in that room and we make sure that there's enough amenity standards to cater for six people within that household. And then just finally, HMOs are intensive management. You're gonna need, if you're managing yourself, you're gonna need really good systems, you're gonna need a lot of time, and uh, you know, dealing with five or six individuals within a house, it, it, it is time intensive. Uh, multiply that by multiple houses, it very quickly adds up uh, compared to a buy to let, where you may not hear from them for, for months on end because everything's going great and stuff like that, but with individual tenancies, there's always small things going wrong inside of all different bedrooms, different just things that come up. So just be aware, we'll go into that in video 10, whether to self-manage or not, um, but they are a lot more management intensive. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that gives you a very basic understanding of what a HMO is. They're a great uh, a vehicle for not only landlords, but for, for tenants alike, uh, you know, so, um, Thank you for watching this first introduction video. Uh, leave any comments down below if you have any questions at the moment. We're gonna be doing one video a week on this series. Uh, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, it massively helps and I will see you in the next video.